Hi, it's Kami Yampla. Uh, first built the year, so let's take a look at the good old uh, original HG Barbados. When this kit first came about, uh, it was a huge deal. A big year for high grades. For something that cost around 15 bucks, you got amazing details, a full inner frame, overall bang for your buck wise, you really can't beat these uh, IBO kits. The Barbados is an amazing kit, but it's also got a lot of issues shared by many of the later IBO kits, so let's take a look at how to deal with them. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to apply these tricks on your next uh, IBO build. The kit offers a lot of surface details, but color separation is not that great. None of these little sigil details are colored, side of uh, the thigh isn't color separated, and there's a huge uh, mold line down the middle. Inner frame has these uh, hydraulic details that could look better if they're painted. Same thing with the pipes in the back. Some details on the backpack are missing, little facial details need to be painted. Uh, that's about it. Overall proportion looks a bit weak as well, so let's see if we can do something to improve that. Not a whole lot of seam lines to deal with here. Uh, a common issue on a lot of these uh, later IBO kits is uh, this middle seam line down the arm, and uh, we got another one on the head. The only place to fill is uh, these uh, little tips of the toes, so that's pretty good. Let's start with dealing with the head. One quick thing to make your high grades look less high grade is uh, sharpening all the edges. We'll cut away the protective tips of the, the antenna and uh, glue a bit of PLA plates on top so we have room for sanding. Same thing with these cheek parts. After the glue sets, we can first cut the excess off and uh, then sand it down to get sharp edges. Now let's talk about the arms. This seam line is on so many other IBO kits. Uh, we have visible pipes in the middle, so it'd be a pain in the ass to glue the arms together first. So the best method, uh, in my opinion, is to cut one part of the lower arm off and glue it onto the other. We'll first take a thin chisel, in my case a uh, 0.15 millimeter one, and uh, score the border until the part is almost coming off. Eventually, the part will come off with very little force. Now uh, with a little bit of uh, plastic cement, we'll glue this onto the other side. Wait till the glue sets and now uh, we can get to sanding. This is a nice and easy curved surface, uh, so a sanding sponge will do the job just fine. Now we can test if our arm frame will go inside. Uh, as, as you can see, there is a bit of uh, an interference. I then sand the side to make sure that the border is smooth and uh, sand uh, the interfering bit. Now the arm goes in just fine. After priming, I see a little bit of split uh, still in the middle, so I put on a bit of uh, black super glue and send that off to uh, get a smooth surface. Now let's do some proportion work. Uh, the chest feels a bit flat, so I'm going to add a whole uh, one millimeter plate to this middle part. I'm also extending the waist a little bit. Uh, to make things look natural, I'm going to extend the waist and uh, the hydraulics separately. First, I'm sawing off the hydraulics from the part. With the waist part, I'm cutting the bottom off. It, it seems like the back part extrudes out a little bit, so the place uh, we're adding have to go around it. For the hydraulics, I cut off the original pipe, uh, put a metal pin inside, and uh, extended it with some uh, 3D printed parts to keep the proportions uh, consistent. I also extended the thighs by one millimeter. The entire process was outside of my camera frame except this beginning part when I split the part. So that's an L on my part. But generally I'm splitting both the outer armors and the inner frame of the thighs and extending all of them by one millimeter. And I also got this surprising result of a little armor gap detail on the side. Uh, looks very nice in my opinion. Let's talk about how to remove uh, seam lines for the head. This is a classic trick that applies to a lot of kids. We can just remove the pins on the sides of the face here and do seam line removal on the head and the entire face part will now just slide right into the head. There are a bit of details on the side of the thighs, uh, making the mold line removal difficult to deal with, so I'm just going to sand everything off and remake the detail with the PLA plate. And of course, uh, even though the kit is already very detailed, it uh, doesn't hurt to fill in some of these empty spaces with uh, some more panel lines and uh, details. 
the seam line on this weapon would be uh, ridiculous to deal with, so I'm just gonna uh, skip out on that. Uh, I will sharpen the tip here though to uh, drive your attention away. I also have this railgun thing from the expansion pack. It has uh, two interlocking parts, so I'm going to reduce the locking bit uh, to make this a, a clip-on part instead for easier seam line removal. Painting is uh, again my standard shaded paint. Uh, here I wanted to talk a little bit about the yellow. For nice and bright results, use red as the shade. If you use a darker yellow instead, uh, the result will generally look a bit dirty. For the inner frame, uh, I know a lot of you might be tempted to paint the entire thing in metallic, but I find that to be uh, a bit much. I much rather do metallic details to make them pop and uh, do a, a standard gray for the overall frame. For the pink sigils, I'm going to do the base paint first, then spraying some fluorescent pink acrylic paint. And using the classic wiping technique, I'm going to wipe it away with the acrylic thinner, and uh, the result looks pretty good. I'll be doing the same thing for the eyes. There are these uh, little bits of gray details on the face. Uh, it's really not going to be worth it to mask these, so I'm just going to hand paint them on. To stay consistent with the body shading, I'm uh, going to apply a layer of highlighting paint to the middle of these parts. For decals, I'm using the official Bandai IBO decal sheet uh, for the big logos and uh, HIQ parts decals for uh, little warning messages. I really wanted to use some CGS decals to show that the Barbados still had some CGS markings on it when it first uh, left Mars, but uh, I kind of messed up by adding one to the shoulder part uh, since uh, those parts are made by the turbine, so there was really no reason for these to uh, have any CGS markings. I'm just gonna have to live with that mistake. After that, I'm rounding it off with a little bit of uh, simple paint chipping, weathering, and uh, that's about it for the kit.
And that's it for the HG Barbados. Uh, IBO kits are really as good as it gets value-wise, and uh, if you can apply some of the simple techniques that we went over today, uh, you are gonna end up with something that makes people say, wow, is that really just a high grade? Anyways, first build the year is out of the way. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.